Hello friends, welcome to Free Shiksha. Today I am going to discuss with you how you can plot a quadratic expressions graph howsoever complex it looks without even finding the roots of this equation and that too within a few seconds. So let's start with the very basic information first. So this is the general expression of, uh, uh, of quadratic which is ax square plus bx plus c where a, b, c are constant. The shape that a quadratic, uh, a quadratic expression or a quadratic polynomial will take on graph will always be a parabola where you'll have a maxima or a minima and a point where this maxima or minima will come. So how do you go about plotting the graph? Step 1. Check for the sign of the coefficient of x square which is a here in the general expression. So if your a is positive, your graph will be open from upwards or otherwise if your a is less than 0 your graph will be open downwards so this is how the shape will be for a less than 0 when your coefficient of x square is negative and this will be the shape when your coefficient of x square will be positive so this is the first step then the next step which says find the discriminant we know that discriminant is given by b square minus 4ac. So if your discriminant is greater than 0, we know that the roots are real and distinct. In that case, your graph will cut the x-axis at two places and you will get real and distinct roots. And I have plotted these graphs uh, first for a greater than 0, which uh, looks open upwards. If your d is equal to 0, you will have just one root. So you'll roots, your roots will be real and equal and your graph will look something like this. It will touch the x-axis at one point and then will go past. If your d is less than 0, your roots will be imaginary. In that case, your graph will never cut the x-axis. This is how the graph will look like. Then for a less than 0, you can invert the graph. This is how it will look like for d greater than 0 where you will have two values of x real and distinct roots if your d is equal to 0 you will have one root where your graph will just touch the x-axis and for imaginary you have d less than 0 and your graph will not cut the x-axis then step 3 check for the sign of the product and the sum we know that product is given by c upon a and the sum of the roots is given by minus b upon a I plotted these graphs again for a greater than 0 and I assume you can plot uh, the same graphs uh, by just uh, inverting these graphs uh, upside down uh, for a less than 0. So now case 1 if your product is greater than 0 this means that either both the roots will be positive or both the roots will be negative either they will lie on left side of the y axis or they will both lie on the right side of the x-axis. Now which side will they lie on is decided by the sum of the roots. If sum is less than 0 that means both the roots are negative and if sum is greater than 0 and your product is also greater than 0 that means both the roots are positive and this is how your graphs will look like. Whereas if your product is less than 0 then your one root will lie on the left side of the y-axis and the other root will lie on the right side of the y-axis but where will the minima or maxima lie will it be on the left side or right side will be decided by the sum of the roots if sum of the roots is less than zero that means your negative root will be bigger than your positive root and the mean will be negative which which gives the point of minima so that way is if your sum is less than 0 and product is less than 0, this is how your graph will look like. Where one root will lie on left and the other on the right side and the minima or maxima will be on the negative x-axis. And if your sum is greater than 0 for product less than 0, one root will still be positive while the other be negative. But your maxima or minima will lie on the right hand side. Well, this was very simple. Let's take an example to demonstrate this. This is a very simple expression. Minus x square plus 5x plus 6. 
We are given a is minus one, b is five, and c is six. Let's find the discriminant which gives b square minus four ac equals forty nine. Sum will be five, and product will be minus six. Now I have calculated the point of maxima also. Since uh, your a is negative, let's let's go step by step. Since your a is negative, your graph will be upside down. Since your d is positive quantity, so the graph will cut x-axis at two places. Now, which way, which place will the y-axis lie? Will it be here or here or anywhere else? Will be decided by the sum and the product. So since sum is positive, that means the positive root, and the product is negative means one root is positive, the other root is negative, and if the sum is positive, that means positive root. is bigger than the negative root that means the maxima lies on the right hand side of the y axis so this is how your graph will look like if you want to precisely find the points also so you can find the roots which is 1 and 6 your point of maxima is given by c minus b square by 4a you can remember this as a formula and the point of maxima is the mean of uh, the sum of the roots which is minus b by a so minus b by a upon 2 which is minus b upon 2a gives you the point of maxima or minima so the point of maxima will be 5 by 2 the point of maxima at the point of maxima the value this expression will take will be 12.25 your roots are minus 1 and 6 so you can uh, find the roots also even in case you are not able to find the roots when your expressions are very complex you can still at least plot the graph and uh, go about solving the questions with the help of this graph i hope this video will be very useful for you thank you so much guys